So if we put our pole through our plane and zoom out here. We make this 90 degree angle with between the pole and the plane. So if we decide to put our plane back into our stereo net, which we're still in 3D, and say we put our plane around north-south again, remember we'll call that north, we'll call this south, and we leave it at a Let's say we put our dip to 45 degrees. Running through north-south, it's about 45 degrees. <clears throat> we now have a pull to our plane. So in 3D space, this is what it would look like, a pull to our plane. So we have our plane cutting through, and then making a 90 degree angle with our plane is our pull. So, Remember, if we're in 3D space right now, if we go to 2D space and just take our half sphere and turn it into a circle, we now have a we now have our plane turning into a line and remember this line is going to be following the back. Oops. Is going to be following the back of our cardboard making a arcuate line. Remember, striking north, south, approximately 45 degrees. And remember, our line or our pole is 90 degrees from our plane. So what you'll see when we work with steering nets is when we count across from this line, either to the right or to the left, we'll see that where the eraser of this pencil marking our pole is in 2D space, which would be right there, is going to be 90 degrees from that plane. So to summarize, poles are used to um, mark a lot of data on our staring net. And we'll move into something where we can actually contour these poles to find an average. Um, but they help us deal with a lot of information on one staring net. So now that we kind of have a 3D visualization of what stereo nets are and how our beds, planes, lines um, work with them, uh, let's just move into stereo nets. All right, guys. So we talked about planes um, and lines and what they look in 3D, what we saw in the field. Now we're going to move on to the stereo net and how we actually um, construct a stereo net and orient um, planes, lines in a stereo net. So if we look at this, this is our stereo net. This is an equal area stereo net. So each of these little boxes on here has equal area. Um, there's also an equal angle stereo net, but I believe um, we will just be focusing with equal area stereo nets, um, at least for this structural geology course. So a few definitions about the lines you see on here. Um, the circle that goes all the way around the stereo net is the primitive circle. You'll be moving along this to mark ticks off um, for different um, degrees. As you can see, degrees run around the circle. We'll get to that in a second. Um, you have lines that go from north to south. These are great circles. And you can see um, they go, they run from north to south, but they're almost an echelon from east to west, as you can see them coming down like this and then flipping like that. We also have small circles, which um, are opposite that. They go east to west. So these circles would be going from here to there, here to there, almost an echelon from south to north or north to south. The angles um, or degrees you see around this circle um, are broken up into 90 degrees for each quadrant, which you should know um, 
looks like quadrant notation that we take with Breton compasses. You can also um, display your stereo net and azimuth going 0 to 180 back to 360. That would be fine as well. Um, and it's just kind of your personal preference. But again, if we go through this, we have north up here. Sorry if that's harder to see. Um, north up here, 10, 20, 80 to 90, which is at east. And then it goes back down east, 80, 70, all the way to south. Um, so remember, if you're out in the field with a quadrant uh, Brunton compass and you had a, let's say, a azimuth strike of, so here's 180, we'll say 160, you would say in quadrant south 20 east. South degrees, 20 degrees to the east. Um, what I kind of like to do, depending on which one I have, is I usually work in azimuth. Um, and you can note that as you would like. Um, so how this usually works is you'll have a um, hard copy of a stereo net and then you'll have a needle or a tack sticking up out of it. Um, and we're not actually going to draw on this stereo net, but we're going to put tracing paper on top so you can, can you know, keep using it um, instead of just using it that one time. So what you do, get your tracing paper, poke a hole, and as you can see, your tracing paper will rotate around the stereo net now. The first thing you should do is on your tracing paper, we'll just look at the south here, is you're going to mark um, your north, south, east, and west first. So you'll draw a little line. Here I draw a tick where south is on the stereo net. So it lines up and you'll do that with south, east, north, and west. Uh, and you'll see up here I have a two for east. And if I bring this down, I'll just move the camera. I also have it up here for north. So do that first. That way if you're ticking in these other degrees, you always know you're um, kind of on the right path. And you're not just kind of marking um, wherever. So after you do that, what you'll want to do is then fill out the other degrees. So here I've marked, um, we'll just look down here. Here I've marked um, south, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. But I've also put in parentheses the azimuth. So 180, 170, 160, 150, 140, 130, 120, and so on. And I did that for every number. Um, or I guess every um, degree and tens on the stereo net. All right, so first step, you're gonna to wanna to fill out your stereo net. Um, before we get into plotting on the stereo net, I just wanna go over one thing uh, which you guys had um, to do on your take home lab. 